I loved your analogy of the, um, the supermarket and out of date stock and moving it to the, to the forward forward in the cabinets and one of the um, incentives for people to buy those is a reduction in cost. Is there an opportunity, <laughs> you know we may laugh but we're talking about a lot of money here, it's better to be used than be thrown in the bin, but um, is there an opportunity to re-evaluate that side of things as well? Look it, it's certainly something that has been raised before, um, generally by braver people than I. Um, <laughs> Look, it is something that we are we are looking at. We look at all options and all the different options. Um, there, there is a new pricing policy being developed at the moment. So one of the things we could look at is, is that feasible? Um, it would require a lot more work from the blood service. So we'd have to balance that off with the benefit of extra work on them when they they least can afford it potentially at night compared to how do we minimise wastage. So it's something we are looking at, but I don't I can't say that we'd be able to give you an answer today or tomorrow. But it's certainly something we have thought about. <coughs> Just a question for the questioner. Who's going to determine what age of blood the patients should receive then? You know, because uh, are we going to, we're going to take that advice from somebody trying to save some shekels on the ward or take some actual clinical advice on, on this? Well, um, similar to the question, you know, the answer to the question, there's a lot of work that needs to go into it. A lot yeah. of thinking that needs to go into it. And that obviously is a difficult dilemma. Mm -hmm. agree with Peter though, it would be really difficult to administer in a big laboratory. Yeah. A challenge for next year. Yeah. I think, can I, I'll just start, I, I think information would be really helpful. We're not part of BloodNet really at, at the moment because CERNA hasn't been linked in. I believe it's coming, but it hasn't been linked in yet. And if we wanted to use the information for BloodNet, we'd have to do double data entry. And I think linking it with the LIS and providing real-time information and generating reports that are actually meaningful to both the blood bank, the clinicians and the transfusion committee would be really useful in driving down wastage. <laughs> I'll get Mr. Bloodnet to just yeah. speak to that because there is a on that scene. So. Mr. Bloodnet, I'm going to regret that, aren't I? Yeah. Um, in, in, I, th I think that is the case. I mean, Bloodnet started life in 2007. We've been trying since that time to actually start interfacing into laboratory information systems. The good news is we're currently interfaced into, there's 13% of national suppliers now interface into Bloodnet. Um, there's work with the SONA interface underway at the moment, so Sydney Southwest Pathology Service should be going live by Christmas. So that'll take us to about 20%. My aim is to try and get to 50% of the national supply by the end of next year. And we're actively engaged with all the LIS vendors and a whole variety of jurisdictions and pathology organisations. So I, mean, I, I think an interface is the ideal way to do it. Mm. You enter it once in one system, it appears in whichever one you need to see it in. And one of the other things we're actually working on at the moment for those who've already got an interface is actually the idea of having a dashboard. So one of the slides Lee showed this morning briefly was the BloodNet user reference group standing in front of what seemed like a towering bank of monitors. Um, one of the things we're actually looking at is for people who have an interface, can we put a dashboard in their hospital that actually shows them, apart from anything else, a real-time list of short expiry units on the wall. Mm -hmm. So you actually think about it, it's there, the data's there, you don't have to think, you just grab it, do your job and keep moving on. So I think you're right, data is probably the key. Oh, now you're doing the sales pitch. Um, uh, pathology. <laughs> um, pathology North in New South Wales uh, were the first inter full interface we had up and running, um, and they've done some great calculations. Uh, they've given us time savings based on every single one of their laboratories using the system, down to how many minutes for what type of process. And for, say, let's pick Royal North Shore. Um, hopefully there's no one in the audience. No. Um, Royal North Shore, the time-saving calculations were up to 17 hours per week of time saved due to the interface. And to my mind, that not only do we get the data to actually do what you need to do, but that's 17 hours a week that they can have back in the laboratory actually doing what they need to do rather than worrying about other systems. So, I mean, I think that 
the, the, the return on investment there for interfaces is phenomenal. It's more a comment than a question, but I think it's interesting to see with some of the new guidelines coming out, we're all addressing massive transfusion protocol. So it's a patient improvement, it's got evidence behind it, but it's causing pressure on our stock. Stock, how do we store it? What's our wastage? Do I have to keep extra FFP? Am I thawing it up front and then not being able to use it? Do I use the extended protocol, which I, again, I'm not keen on? I'm storing extra platelets because of this protocol. So I think it's just extra issues come up that we have to be aware of how we do on an ongoing basis, manage our, our, our wastage, our stock, how do we minimise those things? So I totally agree with Leslie, that's sort of given us a, a lot of new challenges implementing the massive transfusion protocol and the implication it has for stock management. So more a comment. Comment on the comment. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose the other thing we do is we, um, but this is usage really, we, we, actually, we actually work off patient results rather than have set protocols for, for thawing, which, which hopefully means we use the appropriate products. So, yeah, it is a challenge. Now, final point. I have, uh, on behalf of us all here, Kim, thank you very much. Leslie, thank, thank you very you. much.